why, why are we interested in basic intro to environmental recovery? Well, uh, as we've discussed, remember, remember a few of you were present when we were outside at the lunch table discussing the destruction of the environment and the long-term effects it's having on the human race. And, and the reality is that uh, the destruction of the environment has been going on obviously for tens of thousands of years by humanity. And a lot of times what, when we look at an environment, like we look at the environment here for example, because it's been like this for many, many years, usually our entire lifetime, we don't, we don't see what we do over that period of time. And, and unfortunately what's happened historically is tens of thousands of years ago, for example, in places like Turkey and Egypt and the Middle East that are now completely barren and mostly desert were, were all treed. They all had forests on them, right? But what happens is that the trees get uh, destroyed over many years, some, many times over generations. One generation destroys one group, another generation destroys the next group. And then they introduce farming techniques like you know, goats in particular in the Middle East, but cattle, meat-eating type of farming techniques. And what those meat-eating farming techniques do is they, every little seed that is already in the ground that could come up to recover the land is eaten down by the farm animals. So, so in, the, in the soil, we start off with huge, literally millions and millions of seeds in any square, um, squ square metre of land. Usually there's more than a million seeds in that area of, of land. And, and, but what happens is, over time those seeds come up and because of our grazing techniques and our farming techniques, we mow them down or we destroy them before they can reseed. So now the seed bank in the soil gets less and less and less. Over thousands of years you can see what happens is that what might start off with millions of seeds per square metre in the soil ends up with being only a few hundred or even tens of seeds in the square metre and then the next generation, some of those grow again and then they get eaten down and then by the time you have this growing cycle that never gets to fruition where they seed, where they fruit and seed, what happens in the end is there's no more seeds left in the soil of that particular type to recover the land anymore. Right? So, so the cycle basically is the seeds, the recovery plants, which there are millions of seeds of in the ground, germinate so they germinate, they grow into seedlings. Our farming techniques destroys, destroy them, right? And then, of course, the recovery plants that are in the bank try to start again, but now there's less of them, there's less seeds. So you end up with a cycle that is slowly converging converging into nothing left. Now, if after a few generations of time there are no plants that can actually grow or they're all getting eaten down, then what starts to happen is that, uh, well, there's a number of different things that start to happen. The first thing that happens is that because there are no plants, now we get bad erosion, st dust storms and other things like that, which cover over the water table. The water table, all the water table in that area gets evaporated into the, into the atmosphere, dumped usually somewhere else. And so now, now all of the groundwater that were there that would support the plants has now disappeared as well or gone very low, you know, that's why they have to dig deep, deep, deep wells to get to the water in those locations. And eventually over thousands of years what happens is uh, you end up with a uh, desert wasteland. In some places a rocky desert wasteland, in other places a sandy desert wasteland where very few plants can grow and there's very, very few natural seeds left in the ground to recover the land. Does that make sense? And, and because it happens over generations, each generation doesn't see it happening. They just think that what they've got now is normal. Uh, 
right, so they don't actually see it occurring. It's only when you're a spirit for many thousands of years that you can observe it over thousands of years and see it occurring generation after generation that you start to see what's really going on. So we have this uh, recovery plants which would normally turn into seedlings and therefore start recovering the land, getting destroyed again through the farming techniques. And then, of course, there's less recovery plants that can become seedlings because there's less seed in the ground. And then, of course, that continues, this cycle continues until you basically have no longer the soil-based structure or the water structure anymore left in the soil to support growth of any plant. So even though there are still many, many thousands of seeds that are not recovery plants in that ground, none of them can grow, or many of them have been blown away by this stage. So we have this long-term environmental destruction, which, which continues to this day. And in fact, it's worsening. It's worsening every generation. We, we introduce new sorts of farming techniques, which include machinery, and the machinery therefore destroys more land we can clear more land more rapidly. Before we had to do it hand by hand generally. Now we do it with machinery that's capable of, of clearing football fields of, of growth every single second on the planet. So we have a football field, I think it's every second getting destroyed on the planet. And, um, and then of course we continue doing this to it. We grow plants, we grow plants, but eventually the soil can't even grow that plant anymore. And so we get this destruction. And, and a lot of these things in the last hundred years have, have rapidly increased in, in, their, in their occurrence. For instance, in South Australia, uh, many of you will know the area between um, Sejuna and Western Australia, that area there. That, uh, that was a Mallee scrub area um, only 50 years ago. It was a Mallee scrub area. The scrub was about 30 or 40 uh, feet, th about 30 feet high in its canopy, very, very low, low scrub canopy, but it was full of wildlife, as you can imagine, and it had a quite a good rainfall. It had good enough rainfall to grow what they call hard wheat there. So what they did was they got bulldozers and they strang chains between the bulldozers and bulldozed whole areas, that thousands of acres. It was very flat because it used to be an inland sea. It's the Mallee recovered that from an inland sea and um, and and they it recovered over over literally tens of thousands of years it took for recovery because well, the middle of australia was an inland sea and so what what happened was that the recovery occurred over thousands and thousands of years but but these bulldozers went through the place in a few years and they produced in the end land uh, which was tens of thousands of hectares of land um, able very very flat land and able to be farmed for hard hardened wheat which is the best kind of wheat that you can buy on the world market and, and so what they did that they did that and uh, and within 15 years most of the land become unviable so they had crops for 15 years but within 15 years most of the land become unviable un un and within 25 years no land there is able to be farmed anymore. None at all. So, you know, that gives you an illustration of what happens when we do this process in, on a large scale. In Queensland here, it's happening all the time, uh, poisoning as well as the farming. And, and, and pretty much in every country of the world, it's the same. If you fly over Brazil, it's really interesting when we flew over Brazil because when you fly over the Amazon, you see this nice green rainforest sort of thing. And then as you go further, all of a sudden it turns into the kind of country we have here. All of a sudden, it's like you're flying over rainforest then all of a sudden it becomes this, right? And you can see what's happened. There was a rainforest there, but they cleared that land for cattle, car for cattle farming many years ago now. And now it won't recover because it's continually being farmed and, uh, and it's becoming, the interior of Brazil is becoming drier and drier as a result of that as well. Same process, it's just the same process. This continual environmental destruction driven primarily by the emotion of wanting to eat meat, 
but also by other emotions too of making making money out of farming uh, making money out of feeding the world uh, rather than just giving away food and and unfortunately meat-based farming is obviously very very high in terms of its, un its lack of productivity so that's what's going on uh, and we do it everywhere and there's places in the world where it's happening all the time still and there's places like in russia uh, in the Ukraine and other places in, around the Black Sea where now what used to be beautiful fertile valleys have now turned into desert wastelands. Lakes that were up to 300 metres deep have completely dried up completely um, because the water table gets evaporated <coughs> now that that happens. And so you, have, you, end up with, you end up with large areas of land no longer viable to produce food or anything else for hundreds of years in the future and considering the fact that uh, we're still doing the same thing probably tens of thousands of years in the future <laughs>